I have the honor of introducing our keynote speaker today, Carol Craig. Uh, on her bio it said she's a self-described accidental entrepreneur and unconventional CEO, uh, but she's built Craig Technologies from this sole entrepreneur where she had her family in her house, um, you know, all helping her out, to a team in, she started in 1999 to over 400 employees. Uh, they're working in 20 different states, and I think everybody that lives in Brevard County has heard of Carol Craig. Uh, without a doubt, she's one of the shining stars of an entrepreneur here in Brevard County. And besides being on, she's on like 12 different prestigious boards, uh, she also finds an outlet for her creative side. I always find that interesting when Winston Scott was talking about all that he does, he plays the trumpet as well. It seems like a lot of engineers have this creative side and she uh, sings, she plays handbells and the piano at her church. She's the mother of two and wife of John Craig. Uh, but in her spare time, because she's not busy enough, she's doing her PhD in systems engineering because the BA in computer science, the BS in computer science and engineering, and her MS in computer or electrical and computer design obviously makes her a perpetual student, but probably one of the most intelligent people I know. Uh, we're just thrilled to have this multi-talented, this crazy busy, but exciting entrepreneur here to share her experiences with us. Without further ado, I, I welcome Carol Craig. Um, so I have no idea what I'm going to say today, just so you know, I'm going to warn you. And, and those of you who have heard me speak before, you know that, right? That usually it's just I'll figure out what I'm going to talk about once I get there. Which kind of fits with my whole business methodology, which is M-T-S-U-A-Y-G. What does that stand for? Anyone? Exactly. Exactly. That's what it stands for. Make the stuff up as you go. If my, if my mother's in the room, or my minister, that's what we say it is. Otherwise, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Um, but I, w I will share a little bit of my story. Um, it's, it's a constantly changing story. You know, all of you, whether you own your own business or you're working for somebody else, you know the emotional ups and downs and how things constantly change. And, uh, and that's really what's happened to me over the last several years. Um, I do want to comment about when I hear somebody say, you know, you're successful, and, and uh, even Nancy was talking about, talk about, you know, your success and how you got there, trials and tribulations. And then today I was talking uh, with a couple of gentlemen, I lost where they're sitting, but about, they said, you know, your success, and, you know, I, I admire that. And I'll tell you what, I do not feel successful. And so when I think about, okay, what is success, it's all relative, right? And to me, I start thinking, okay, what's success? Success would be having the time to actually get my nails done and not walk around with two broken nails and you know needing a fill. Success would be not having to wear sunglasses to cover up the racing stripe because I haven't been able to get my hair done, which is no longer a racing stripe. It's kind of becoming a whole head of hair. I'm turning back into brown. Um, you know, success would be being able to stop on the way here at Walgreens to get eyeliner because I used to have eyeliner, but it was in my car and it melted. I almost asked it, asked somebody today if I could actually borrow your eyeliner. These sound like very superficial things, which they are a little bit, but but you know, just to be able to have that time to breathe. Success would also be not waking, be sleeping at, through the night and not waking up in the middle of the night with your skin crawling and wondering, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? And starting to worry about, okay, at this level, what happens next? And I have to make certain big decisions and how's that going to affect other people? How's it going to affect not only 400 plus employees, how's it going to affect my family? And, and I thought in the early days, you know, once I get to this point, things will get easier that will relax. And then once I get to this point, unfortunately, I'm also one of those entrepreneurs like, oh, this is a great opportunity. Now let's do this and let's do that, do whatever. And along the way, I think I've gotten a little, I've lost, not lost my way, but you get a little sideways and you look this direction and then you come back. And I think, I think what happens is God basically says, it's time for a course correction. You need to focus. You're getting a little out of control. You need to settle down and you need to figure out, you know, what do you really want to do and what's important and where are you going? And that's kind of what I've been going through right now. It's all good, we're growing, but if you if you stop thinking about that and you stay where you are, um, the next thing you know you're gonna get, you know, the rug pulled out from under you. And I started to think about that and started to worry. And then I realized it's time to make some changes in my organization. And it's really more of a leadership. It was me kind of setting back a little bit, doing other things not being as involved as I really should be. And that's kind of the, the place that I'm at right now. And so I'm starting with that. 
just so you kind of have an idea, but I do want to give a little more background uh, of where the company started and how I got to here, just to, to give you even more perspective. How, how many of you actually know my story? Oh, so you're going to fall asleep in about five minutes, aren't you? Um, so I'll try to go through it pretty quickly. I'm only supposed to talk about 20 minutes, and those of you who know me know that I could just keep talking and keep talking. And I also, at the, you know, once I'm done, I would love to entertain some questions. And, you know, you, when you've got a, me as a captive audience, ask me anything. And I'd also like to hear your stories, too. Uh, but I did start my company out of my kitchen. Uh, my background is computer science, computer engineering, software development. You know, I never intended to be an entrepreneur. And, Sometimes I sit there and think, why did I do this? You know, wouldn't I just rather be an engineer working for somebody? But then a few minutes later, something exciting happens, or I talk to an employee, and I'm like, oh, this is great, and the things that we can do, and just the, you know, making an impact on people's lives, and it's, okay, I'm back to that. But I started truly just as an engineer. I uh, had worked for the Department of Defense. I was uh, designing cockpit systems. Done a whole bunch of things in my life. Very ADHD. And my corporate, my you know, business is the same way. But I was designing cockpit systems and decided, another course correction, that I thought it would be kind of cool if I could uh, fly airplanes. And so I applied to become a naval flight officer, and I got accepted. Which the real problem there was, I'm afraid to fly. So it was one of those, and some of you may not know that, even if you heard my story, but one of those moments, it was an, it was an oh stuff moment, we'll put it that way, um, of like, uh oh, now I gotta do this. And, but I was gonna be a naval flight officer, so I meant to sit in the back seat, which is cool, that just means I can you know, do the engineering and calculations, and I can tell a guy where to go, so perfect. So I did that, but at once I got, right when I was starting to join the Navy, they changed it so women could fly in combat, and they decided naval flight officers needed to fly front seat. So again, it was another oh stuff moment of like, oh man, how am I gonna do this? I didn't eat for three months. It was a great weight loss program. Uh, but I did end up learning to fly. I ended up uh, becoming one of the first women at my, at my squadron. I went through SEER school, which is like POW training. A lot of great, cool things came out of it. But um, I had an injury also around the same time. And because of a knee injury, I could no longer fly. So another course correction, trying to figure out what I was gonna do. I'd met my husband, John Craig. He's actually a school board member, District 2. I, don't tell me what you think of him. I know everyone has different opinions on different stuff, so if that's his job, not mine. Um, but, uh, but he was in the Navy, and now I'm trying to figure out what to do, so I started following him around. And as I did that, I couldn't find jobs. I could find, you know, different jobs, but not engineering, not what I really liked doing. And I finally had somebody tell me, you gotta just incorporate. Just for the heck of it. Just incorporate, come up with a name, and you never know what might happen. And sure enough, within like just a few months of incorporating, my husband gets transferred, we're leaving again. I quit my job and just said, all right, you know, let me just try this thing. And so that's how my consulting and the one woman show really started. It was just a series of accidents and here I am. So I was just gonna do the consulting. And it's easy, it's me, you know, control, I can handle that. Um, but I also missed the military, and I missed making um, a difference, and I missed the impact. And I wanted to see if I couldn't do something else, and, and um, that's why I moved into government contracting. Plus, with my background, I really, that's what I knew, and that's what I understood. So I looked into it, and it turns out I'm a fiber, which means small business, woman-owned, service-disabled, veteran-owned. I'm also part Cuban, so, you know, minority and my family lived in a hub zone. So if any of you guys are familiar with government set-asides, I pretty much get every single one of them. Now, a lot of people would say, oh, well that's why you're so successful, that's why you got all these contracts, and it's like, absolutely not. Did not make a difference. I mean, there were, we moved here in Brevard County in 2004. I still had 10 employees, five part-time, and five were related to me at that point. And we moved here, and I didn't have the work. I had those set-asides, like, what am I gonna do? There were very, there were several very lean years. And that was also when the hurricanes hit. And I remember thinking, like, God, is this a sign? Like, should I get out? Is that what you're telling me? You know, we moved down here, and all these things happened, and maybe I should just go back to where I was. But we persevered. My husband had left the military, didn't retire. I have a son with a disability. If I have time, I'll talk about that. But, uh, and he decided quality of life was more important. And so he got out of the military at 16 and a half years, went into the reserves, went from being an 05 to flying for the airlines, no money. Right at the same time, we moved here, and I'm trying to get a company off the ground. And this is why, like even now, I'm waking up in the middle of the night with my skin crawling, thinking, oh my gosh, I remember this feeling. This was back in 2004, waking up with my skin crawling and thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? How am I going to, you know, how are we going to make, how are we going to make this? And uh, 
And I'm doing, even today, the things I did then, getting up at one in the morning, getting on the internet, looking to see what I can do, and customers, and, and things that we can change. But, um, but I'm losing my train of thought already on this. So, so we moved to, so we're back in 2004, start moving into government contracting. That's really when I started to utilize those set-asides. But like I said, there, it, it didn't all come at once. It was really a lot of, you know, basically begging, you know, to, for customers and saying, you know, please trust us, help us grow, you know, take a chance on us. And after about three years, three years of making absolutely no money, me trying to figure out how I'm going to support family on my husband's $25,000 a year with the airlines, um, finally the contracts started to hit. And that was in 2005. I think we won our first one. We had maybe at that like I said we had probably 20 people at, at that point. And then today we've got around, oh, we've got over 400, probably 440 some employees. Now everything, you know, that's, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that, because a lot of times the employees kind of fluctuate when you win a contract, you lose a contract, that kind of thing. But we've definitely been able to grow, and we've grown a lot because of the relationships in this county, I think, is really what's been what's been important. And I don't mean that I got the contracts in this county, because like I said, we're in, we're in 22 different states, and I don't know how many years, maybe five years ago I might have only had 20 employees here locally. Today locally, I think we've got about 200 or 220 employees or so. But when I say that this county is largely responsible, a lot of that is just because of the community, the involvement. I accidentally got involved in a lot of nonprofits. You know, people came and sought me out, and it's like, okay, this sounds kind of cool. And you know, once I started doing it, it was a, it was a wonderful thing. Um, but I think I think that was really instrumental, and I, it's really that's why I love this county and what's so valuable about it. You know, a lot of the organizations. But just in general, I think it's just the people and how we care about each other. So anyway, so I started growing the company bigger and bigger. And a lot of you might have known that I um, had the opportunity to sign a Space Act agreement with NASA to take over a lot of their equipment that was used to refurbish the shuttle. And the shuttle would come back. You know, all that equipment is with, you know, they work on an MRO type of work and send it back out. So we signed a Space Act agreement to take over a lot of that equipment. I had started a little manufacturing facility just to do more like prototypes. And that's why I thought, okay, well, maybe this is a good opportunity. It's definitely a be careful what you wish for. Because we took over the facility, brought on a lot of people with experience, and we grew the facility to where it is today. The only issue now, of course, is the Space Act agreement is expired. And so that's where when I talk about the decisions you have to make, it's like, does this make sense? You know, what's the next step in, in the story? And we're really, you know, taking a look at that and saying, you know, okay, we're not going to renew the Space Act agreement, but what do we what do we do well? What came out of this experience? And so that's what we're we're doing right now. We we're very good. We got a lot of great customers, we have a good reputation, we can deliver. This is on our manufacturing side, and so that's where I have had to step back and say, you know. What do I want to do and, and where do we go from here? So that's that's kind of the stage that we're at right now. Continuing to grow, continue to be involved in the community, um, and then continuing to focus on my family. And I'll give you the real quick story about my son and kind of um, it, it, what's really important to think about my son, my family in general, is that that's what kind of brings me back to reality and grounds me to remember, okay, what is truly important? You know, if everything went away tomorrow, what is important, and our family is important, you know. And many of you also, you, you think you have a friend who's very involved in the community, um, who's very sick right now. I think a lot of you know who I'm talking about. Um, I think when you see things like that and and um, understand, you know, what's the worst that can happen, you, it helps you refocus. So, my son is 15 years old. Um, I'm going to do the quick story. I can do the long, drawn out, get the <gasps> gasp from the audience kind of thing, but I'm not going to do that. I'll do the quick and dirty. Danny, was, when he was born, we had a lot of issues with him, and he was misdiagnosed. The Navy hospital made a mistake on a CAT scan and basically told us that a third of his brain was missing and he would not live. And this is when he was four days old. Well, I requested an MRI because I'm a control freak, and I wanted to know what I did wrong and then how I could fix it. And um, in the meantime, we had taken him to a home for disabled infants because they said he was so severely disabled, he might make it to 12, he might make it to 2, they didn't know he needed around-the-clock care. We check him into a home for disabled infants, and the next day, I'm sitting with that doctor, and he looks up and he says, you need to take this, do not resuscitate off this child right now, because we put one on him because he was so severely disabled. And we said, why? And he said, because the results of his MRI show there's nothing wrong with his brain. And so, at that point, trying to figure out what's going on, it turns out that, uh, like I said, they had made a mistake. The Navy hospital made a mistake on the CAT scan. He actually had a rare genetic disorder instead. And our lives were, you know, 
going from completely turned upside down to just sort of turned upside down. And once I found out that he had a rare genetic disorder at that point, I kind of went, all right, I couldn't fix brain damage, but I think I can fix this genetic disorder. And his genetic disorder is Prader-Willi syndrome. So right there, when you're told my child's going to die, and then you're told, told, no, just kidding, he's actually going to live kind of a thing, it does change your perspective all the way around. The last 15 years haven't been easy. Danny's doing extremely well. His disorder, Prader-Willi syndrome, is actually a, it's a malfunction of the hypothalamus. The worst case is adults and kids with Prader-Willi syndrome never feel full. So if you can imagine being hungry, and no matter how much food you are given to somebody, they're still hungry. And there's a lot of other issues that go along with it, anxiety. I mean, my son performs like he's more high-functioning autistic, but there's a lot, of, a lot of challenges. And he just had scoliosis surgery. He had a 72-degree curve, and they fixed it to 12 degrees. And he's doing amazingly well. And so, you know, I look at all these things. He just, we just looked at his grades from last year. He was supposed to be mild to severely mentally retarded. He got straight A's his second semester of um, his ninth grade year at Merritt Island, mainstream classes, and so he's got a 4.0. You know, and he did got a B on his EOC. You know, all these little things. Anyway, yeah. But, but it's it's those things that I got to go back when I'm sitting here. You know, wake up in the middle of the night and I pray a lot. You know, just and no, and I know a lot of people in this community do. And when you start to talk about it, you start to realize how many really do. What a strong faith we have. And I know I, I pray a lot, wake up in the middle of the night. But it's those things when I sit there and think about what is really truly important. If I hadn't done this journey, if I hadn't sacrificed everything and been so stressed in the early days. Would Danny have, would I have been able to learn about the Moore's Children's Hospital? Would I be on the board? Would I have been able to have Danny being uh, taken care of by some of the finest doctors? You know, no, probably not. I mean, everything that I've done, everybody that's touched my life here in Brevard County has resulted in something better for my family and for my children. So even when I'm at my lowest depressed, like, why am I doing this? You know, I just want to be a housewife and go lay on the beach or something like that. Then I realize all the blessings that have been brought to me because of it. And, and that's pretty much my story. I'm sticking to it. So if anybody has any questions for me, let me know. Ask me some questions just because it'll make me feel better. You know, I ramble, ramble, and all of a sudden, oh, it's over? She's done? She's out. Yes, sir? What's in your future? <laughs> oh, uh, um, I don't, I don't know. A Miller Lite, actually, in about five hours. Um, no, actually, what's in my future? What's in my future? Actually, is to continue to grow. To con continue to grow, Craig Technologies. Um, and and actually, I'm returning to being more aggressively involved. You know, I went through those early years of begging, and so for a while there, I kind of stepped back. I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want everyone else to do it for me. Well now, it's like mom's back. I've rejoined the fold and I realize I'm still excited about what I do, honestly. I'm very passionate about our company. I love the people that work for me. I love the work that we do. And I'm excited to actually get back out there and go and talk to more companies and win more contracts and talk to about the things that we can do. And so that's basically what's in my future. I'm paring down a few things. You know, some of the boards I've dropped off of because it became too overwhelming. My, my PhD is still sitting where it was about two years ago. I finished all the coursework, sort of doing a dissertation, but not really. You know, I want to go, kind of go back to that stuff, but I really, really had to refocus and figure out what is important. And I think feeling that passion about my company again, I mean, as far as you know, getting out there in person, that's important. And then I have a 13 and a 15 year old that I got to keep out of jail, so I'll be focusing on that too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's me. Um, I was looking at your website while you were speaking because I think I'm the only person in the room who doesn't know everything about Craig Technologies. And I saw in there that you have programs for, for students to come and you know, kind of learn about career opportunities. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we do a lot of STEM programs and, and that came out about just because you know schools would ask my children were school age and We'll do some things like a tropical, we have what we call a mini mesters program that we put in place and, and a lot of it centers around manufacturing but also engineering, we support them there. Um, we're involved in the Da Vinci, um, what's, that? Da Vinci? what's the Da Vinci? Academy. Academy. Academy, thank you. I haven't had a lot of sleep. Da Vinci Academy with Merritt Island, uh, I mean, numerous STEM programs, robotics, everything along those lines. So, And then we also 
that a lot of times we'll just come in and mentor or have kids come in and we'll mentor them, whether it's in the business side, it's not just the manufacturing. We have this big fancy building and people like things and toys and that is attractive, but it's surprising how many children actually want to hear about you know, how you grow a business and the entrepreneurial side. So we'll have programs like that as well. So That's fantastic. Yeah, well, and I'm not doing it justice. <laughs> yeah, really thank you. Hi, um, I'm Ray from Counseling and Careers. I'm, I'm wondering if you have a uh, program for veterans in a step type of program. We, we uh, work with veterans all, from all walks of life, and uh, I'm sure some of them would be an asset to you. So I, I know we have a large number of veterans and even disabled veterans that work for us, for sure. And we, the other way that we support is just through the community and organization, organizations like yourself. Uh, but whenever somebody comes to us, usually I'll have them talk to our HR department and honestly we are always open to how can we help what can we do differently and and i know that we've done some things but um but if you have suggestions we talked earlier too plus your your gala is on september 30th right at the rialto which is right across from us yeah um so yeah so we are involved we do it formally and informally as well yes ma'am yeah and I realize now that I never even said what Craig Technology, because usually I'm supposed to start with, okay, Craig Technologies is an engineering technology manufacturing firm located in the that little whole thing. So we have, we support on our, what we call our services side, we support a lot of federal government customers. And we do it in multidisciplinary engineering, software development, training, whether it's distance learning, courseware training, that's the product side. We also support Kennedy Space Center and other NASA sites with, again, engineering, um, PhD type of support, we do a lot of research and development, and we also support launch services uh, here in, in Patrick and Air Force Base, we do a lot of IT support. So it's, it really is just about anything you can think of in the engineering and technology side. We have products, but primarily we have people who are augmenting and, and helping all of our customers. I always say it's not a staffing company, because what bothers me, and not that it bothers me, there's a need for that, but what we don't do is we don't say, here's somebody, just you know, now go do your job and you won't hear from us. All you'll hear about us is the payroll type of a thing, or you get your paycheck. We're very involved, we care about our employees, we move them around to different types of contracts if they're not happy doing what they're doing. The program managers are there to help them out and, and, and then also work with the customer as well. So it's a little more, you know, we're, we're much more involved in what our employees are doing and what our customers are doing. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, if someone develops a new technology or finds a way to use an old technology different, how would one present that to your company for research and development? Uh, that's a good question. We, we don't really have a research and development or an innovation department as such. Um, what we have can done... Can we start one? Yeah, can we start, start one? <laughs> Got any money? Um, <laughs> No, but what I would say what has happened before in the past is somebody has had an idea and had something they were interested in. I'd go back to my leadership and just say on any of our contracts, is there somebody out there who do you think would have this type of, you know, understanding of it, um, have any input, that kind of a thing, you know? I mean, we, we don't necessarily do it, but that doesn't mean that there isn't somebody in our company. And I just had this discussion with my leadership today. I said, I'm very frustrated because I don't think we know how great our company is. I don't think we know exactly what every single employee does. And we need to. You know, we need to go to them and understand, you know, that the guy work at cyber. You know, I said, you know, we can sit there and go, yeah, we do cyber support in the launch services contract. Do you really know what that means? And they're like, uh, uh, I'm like, yeah, I didn't think so. I said, well, I'm the same way at this point, you know, and so I think that's really important. So we're reaching out to more of our employees and to understand what their, their uh, you know, expertise is and if they have any of those kinds of things so that would be the way that we'd handle it oh, we're actually kind out of running time. out of time no no that's okay and carol's phenomenal i'm not are you able to stay a little bit after one oh, i'm not going anywhere I'll, actually i am going somewhere i'm going with betsy farmer to see promise of her barge oh, so excited because yeah as mentioned you know my son with a disability um that's one of those organizations that i think would be very beneficial so you're gonna make me stop talking and answer questions <laughs> we have brownies though for you I got wait, former okay, mayor. Can I at least? Can do today. Okay, you sir. I hope you're. No, I'm not going to vote for you, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am. Are you still playing the piano?
I am still playing the piano. Actually, that is one of the things that keeps me sane, is being able to sit down, play the piano, um, sing. I still sing in the choir you know, every 8.15, every Sunday morning. And then I go up to Jacksonville as well and, and play piano. What I am trying to do, though, is learn songs. I'm no fun. I have to sight read. And so my husband says I'm no fun at parties because uh, I have to have the music in front of me. So I'm actually trying to learn some songs and hopefully get out there. If anyone knows who Johnny Danger is, he's a local musician, we have a little playlist and I'm going to start uh, working on those songs and we'll be playing at bars occasionally. So thank you. All right, thank you so much.